Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jack Sims. If you're planning a meeting, the one question you don't want to hear from your boss or the speaker selection committee after the event is, where on earth did you get that lousy speaker? Here's what I know from years of working with meeting planners and delivering keynote speaking sessions for major corporations and associations over the past 12 years. Planning and executing successful meetings is a tough and sometimes thankless job. Sometimes all you can do is hope to minimize the risk of something going wrong, you know, Murphy's Law and all that. So let's make the part of your job where you choose a speaker a little easier today. You guys want a speaker who's delivered time and time again on business growth, branding, and marketing, and a special big keynote on business gold, came to the right place. I must tell you, I do not speak on motivation because I think that anyone in business should be pretty motivated by themselves. What I do is harness my listeners' drive and energize and equip them to take the right steps forward. When I sold my business to Omnicom, uh, they bought my name as part of the title of the company, right? So here's the thing. That went, I went through contractual uh, periods of time, etc. So my, the question is today, who owns the Jack Sims brand? Interesting question, eh? Who owns Jack Sims brand? Today, you do. You own the Jack Sims brand. You see, because what happens is at the end of this session, you're going to say, hey, that was stand up, that was great. Or, eh, maybe not so good. Or, you know, whatever. You know, we've been 15 minutes into it already and you're saying already, hey, I, this is interesting or it's not, whatever. But my point is, you decide what my brand means to you. Make sense? And it's exactly the same for your customers. I mean, exactly the same for your customers. They decide what your brand means by giving you a purchase order, signing on the dotted line to a contract, whatever it might be. But that's how it works. They decide what your brand means. Your customers own your brand. First, who answers the phone? I don't care who it is, and I hope it's a person, not a machine. Has to be scripted. They've got to say exactly what you want your brand to say that reflects your brand culture. Have you ever caught up a lawyer or somebody here? Smith, Smith and Smith, please hold. You ever got that? Right? You don't want that, right? No, it's got to be scripted. And call in twice a week, uh, you know, or two or three times a week, and just to find out how they answer in the phone. That's pretty important. That's your brand at work, right? Well, our reception, she came to us one time, uh, and said, hey, I want to change the message for the holidays. At that time, our company was called Sims Freeman O'Brien, or SFO. And uh, she, the holiday period, and, uh, she said, and she gave us a script that she wanted. I said, knock, it, knock yourself out, because we were in a bit of a fun industry. you know." Anyway, so she answered the phone. Ho, 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 it's SFO. <laughs> <laughs> right? Cool, right? Makes you laugh. Yeah, that's what we want. We want customers feeling good. That reflects our image, our impression in the marketplace. Sure it did. So work it. That's one of the things you can control. Everybody does it. Just do it better than the competition does, right? What we tend to do was come up with a creative product, all right? The way we go to market, the image we want to put out there. And generally, we don't spend enough money in that arena. Remember, it's not the creative process that gets it, it costs the money. It's the delivery vehicle that you use, the TV, the print, whatever it might be. That's what costs the money. Look at your bills. You're going to find that for sure. Okay? Check it out. Then you, I'm suggesting what we do is spend a little bit more on the front end. Don't be a creative director yourself. You're locksmiths. Let creative people do the things that get higher, better people to do that part of your business. Spend a little bit more money on the creative process and maybe a little bit less money on the media. And I promise you, the return on your investment will increase. And I asked everybody in the list this question. How much would you pay for a set of half-carat diamond stud earrings? Good quality. That was bought at a Walmart. Next group, next third, at your local jeweler. Last group, Tiffany's. What would you pay? So it wasn't, there was no other than that. It was good quality half-carat. The Walmart folks said something between $150 and $250. The jewelers said somewhere between 400 and 800, 
and the, the people who got the Tiffany's one said 800, 1200 and up. Same product. Think little blue boxes, guys. Think little blue boxes. Make it attractive for them to want. It's about value. It's all about value. Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. If you have one, can everyone in your company quote the corporate mission statement? 7% said yes, 50% said no, and 42% said somewhat. How many, anybody here know, know their corporate mission statement? Anybody willing to stand up and talk about it and say it? I've never had anyone stand up yet when I ask that question. Nobody knows because nobody cares. They don't care. What's mission? Who cares? What? The only right reason you write a mission statement is to go to the bank to borrow money. To try, or somebody, somebody you want to impress to do that. What you do need is a brand commitment statement. What is your brand committed to achieve in the marketplace? And let everybody know that in your company. That's what works. What's your brand committed to doing in the marketplace? Right? Brand commitment statement, however you want to write that. I know we've done it many, many times. And I will tell you, it works. And it's short and sharp. And ours was this. It's all about, the, all about the work. The work is always the work, all to make our customers more profitable. So uh, I call up the bike company. I won't tell you their name, Santa Fe Bike. And <laughs> i got a mic now, uh, <laughs> nearly. Anyway, they um, got through the brand manager. And I asked him the question. I said, listen, you know, my wife bought this bike, no pedals. All of your brochures show people, because it's like a prerequisite for a bike, isn't it? I mean, you kind of, <laughs> they all show people pedaling bikes. And you're video streaming, every bike's got pedals on it. Well, so you have to say, understand, this is a top of the line bike and people want to know, but no, no, that's not good enough. Then comes the kicker, and this is it. But sir, this is the industry standard. Who cares? I'm a customer, man. Right? Are you doing things in your industry that's the industry standard? Don't care. Make it right for the customers. Okay? Make it right. Keep your promises. If you're the one who gets to decide who speaks at your next annual convention, then you have to know what you're doing. You've got to be sure that you hire a speaker who can not only deliver the kind of message you want, but stir the guts of your audience. You've got to be sure that what your audience learns will positively affect your business or their business. So here's the thing. You need to know that whoever you put on that stage has actually done what they're talking about. I don't mean, you know, learned it by working somewhere and reading books on the subject. I mean, someone who's really taken hundreds of businesses from zero to 60.